I do want to touch on a lot of these developments here and whether these political development scandals, whatever you want to call them, are going to weigh on investors as they start to fear that uh, the president's attention or maybe the president himself gets sidelined here. Uh, the former Nasdaq chairman and CEO on all of this, Robert Greifel. Um, Robert, good to see you. Good to be here, Neil. Um, it's the noise, the outside noise, that this could materialize into something that after Manafort and Cohen, possibly others, uh, markets of more uncertainty, that's an uncertain future. What do you think? Well, I think the markets are going to, at the end of the day, focus on the corporate earnings, right? That is, has been and will be the drivers of the market. While I'm not sure about a 50-year bull market, at the end of the day, whether it's a record bull market or not, what matters are our earnings growing, right? Are corporations doing better? And I think the prognosis for that, certainly in the next 12 months, is quite strong. Now, markets are not, I always like to tell people because they find this hard to believe, they're not really red or blue, they're just green. They like to make a lot of money. They made a lot of money with Bill Clinton. They've been making a lot of money uh, right now, Donald Trump, and they don't want to see that disrupted, right? No, definitely not. I mean, the, the, the markets are completely apolitical. Right. It's the expression of capitalist desires in the marketplace. and that's the animal the, spirits. It's the animal spirits, and they're, they're alive and well right now. You know what's also alive and well? The love of technology. Now, it's yeah. very different, though, from the first wave of love, right? And the, the last bull market where the, the Internet boom and a lot of these companies that had no earnings or prospects of getting earnings. Um, how do you see the difference? Well, it's dramatic difference. And you highlighted, uh, I think, the important factor. Back in 2000, and I'm old enough to remember back in 2000, you had companies that are trading on the ether, their own promise of the future. Now, when you look at a company at, like Apple, by any measure, especially X the cash they have in the balance sheet, this stock is fairly priced. So that's a dramatic and complete difference than we had, you know, 15, 18 but years ago. But the Apples and some of the others, they were the exception to the rule. Now, Facebook would come later into right. this bull market. But do you worry that, that the people assign no difference, that there are technology funds that hang on the very survival and the thrust from these companies, uh, you know, and the so-called FANG stocks, that... that you know, it shows a dependence on just one key sector. Well, one is you have to recognize that technology cuts across all sectors, right? So you have companies identified as technology companies, but any industry right now is a technology-based industry, whether it be retail, banking. Think about how uh, pervasive technology is in that uh, arena. So you're going to see technology continue to advance, continue to be more important across all sectors of the marketplace. I think all sectors will benefit from that. What about individuals? 55% um, of Americans invest directly or indirectly in the markets. More might be affected by them, obviously, but that number really hasn't budged mightily. And, and what do you tell roughly half Americans who are not in this? Well, uh, first off, you have to understand the whole financial picture. But clearly, uh, there are ways to get into the market indirectly, which I think a lot of people, individuals, go that route. Uh, but if you look at the fullness of time, right, those people who have been invested in the equity markets have outperformed other asset classes. Are there one, three, five-year aberrations to that? Of course. But over the fullness of time, being involved in the equity market will provide a better return uh, but it depends on the time frame, right? There was oh, a yeah. time if you wanted to mimic the, the NASDAQ, for example. Right. Well, I mean, in 2000, when it peaked, you'd, you'd wait close to a decade to get your money back, yeah. right? But, yeah. but what do you tell young people in particular who always talk to me and say, you know, Neil, I really want to get on this thing? Yeah. What do you well, I'm, I'm saying, if you're, especially if you're a young person, you have the time uh, in your career and your life to wait out the ups and, and downs of the marketplace. Do not try to time the marketplace. Be in the marketplace for the ups and the downs. And over then the fullness of time, you will get a superior return on your invested assets. What do you tell people about look at the landscape now? We're clearly the, the, the world's engine here, uh, both yeah. the, in terms of the, the economy and, and what's going on in our markets. You, you see that continuing? Well, I see what uh, the most optimistic viewpoint is, understand the tax reform, which was substantial, we put in place this year, has really not fully affected corporate earnings as of yet. Also, we've been on a deregulatory but mission. But it helps the comparisons, right? 
It, it, it certainly does. It's the last does. year when the taxes were much higher. But you're talking about the direct impact of the tax cut. I'm right. talking about the ability to Understood. invest more in your business over time. That we're will, not seeing a lot of that, though. We're seeing a lot of companies buy back stock, which they're free to do. They're definitely free to do, but I think you're seeing both, right? You have enough of a benefit from, from the tax cut, and you also have the business that's performing well where they can serve two masters, where they can buy back stock, return capital to shareholders in a tax efficient way. I think that's a good thing, while also investing in their, their future. And so that investment in the future are not showing up in the numbers you see today or next quarter. Likewise, when you look at the performance of the companies, uh, the ability to take that incremental money, right, and uh, do really wonderful things on it, I think you know, it's going to be quite fascinating to see. The other factor is deregulation. Right. That right. takes a long period of time to show up in corporate uh, earnings. So, so you have a deregulatory environment that gives you some new business opportunities, opportunities you wouldn't have pursued before. You pursue that, you're not going to get a return instantaneously. So look at the earnings today. I still see that we have tailwinds coming uh, with respect to the uh, changes this administration has made. In trade and potentially higher rates, right? Yeah, well, trade is certainly out there, and I think when you talk to most executives today and the general public and anybody who's read The Art of the Deal, right. they know there's back and forth. And it so seems they, they think cooler heads prevail, this isn't going to be a big deal. I think it's noise right now. I think it's noise right now. It's yeah. posturing to the extent it gets real, then I think it will have a negative impact on the marketplace. But we want to see you know, what transpires. What's the end state? All right. Bob Garfield, thank you very, very much.